This Tektronix uh, TDS 3012 was given to me last week by a friend of mine who uh, clears out old electrical um, equipment from a company he uh, deals with. Um, this was being thrown out in the scrap um, and he had no idea what was wrong with it. it. All it said was there was a CPU fault. Um, so as he asked me if I wanted it, I thought, well, yeah, it'd be nice to have a decent, um, well, LCD uh, CR rather than a CRT uh, scope. So it turned up, and it, as you can see, it's in pretty good nick actually. Um, I cleaned a bit, a few scuff marks up and things like that, but it wasn't bad. I initially switched it on, um, and it worked for a, a minute or two, and then blew the fuse. And I've popped the back off it and stripped the power supply down, um, and couple of the capacitors had failed, replaced a couple of capacitors um, and it seems to be working okay apart from one slightly strange um, error message it comes up with. Now I think I've worked out what's happened with this. Apparently the scope was working absolutely fine until it went for calibration. How many times have you heard that? Um, power the scope up. Just let it run through. Now it came with, the nice thing is it came with, in the back it came with all its original probes and things which is a, a bit of a bonus, as you can see, it's like some of the stuff that's unopened, it's got uh, you know, little identifying rings for the uh, scopes which is quite nice so you can identify which channel you're on, things like that. And Tom Tim's probe is standard, it's waiting for the scope to boot. Now what you'll find is when it boots, it's a self-test okay. Now just wait a second. Wait for this to clear. And there we go, and it's a system error. The system error has occurred, consult your Tektronix uh, service centre for assistance. But if you go into the uh, utilities, um, <coughs> And we'll select diagnostics and error log. You'll see there that the error log shows that it's got what it says is a CPU fault. Okay, so scope lead in and connect it to its calibrator. Do you think is that one? Okay, I'm going to slow time base. So let's speed up the time base. Just turn off channel 2. In a triggering level, right? Where are we? Here we are. Okay, so you can see that the scope's working, um, and all the all the other facilities seem to be working absolutely fine. So measure, uh, so our frequency should be one kilohertz, and you can see it's got knocked up one kilohertz here. So that's working correctly. Um, amplitude. <coughs> Let's have a look. We've got amplitude. So we've got what we. Are we on volts per division wise? We're on 100 millivolts per division, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 500 millivolts peak to peak, which is. I think that's correct. Actually, we're probably on the. Uh, so this is a 5 volt probe compensation. So are we on times 10 on the scope probe? Let's just have a look at these channel 1 settings. No, we're on auto. We need to be on auto or times. Um, so which one selects times 10, there we go. So it's got the right probe compensation on, on a multiplier on now. So 1 volt per division, so there you go, 5 volts peak to peak, so that's working absolutely fine. Channel 2 works exactly the same. Um, everything else seems to work, all the sort of that menus for acquiring data and things seems to work. These are strangely scopes, it's got a <clears throat> what looks like someone's broken two switches out of here, but what it is is actually you pop this little catch out here and you can plug in electro modules um, for various other triggering options. I don't think they've particularly sold very well really. Um, I haven't seen many for sale. And the ones that are for sale are about three times the price you pay for this little scope anyway. 
Uh, but the error message, I've been trying to work out what it is, and I think I might have found it. If I go to uh, save and uh, recall, I want to say I want to save this waveform to ch save to waveform channel one, and I want to save it to a file. So I put a memory card in the in the uh, USB port at the front. Not easy to do one-handed. So the lights on in the memory card. You can assume, and so we press uh, save to file. This is FD zero. Now FD zero is floppy disk zero. So were well, you thinking maybe it's a legacy file name? So we'll say, okay. So we'll try and save that. Uh, so save waveform to file, and then we just we've got that selected. And then I think all you do is save channel 1 to a specific file, press this button, and they come up with this error. <coughs> Mass storage error. Mass storage error has occurred, remove the media, re reinstall it, and try again. Now, I've tried this a number of times, and unless I'm doing something stupid, I got a funny feeling that maybe when it went in for an update, someone's put the wrong firmware on it. And I think they probably put a firmware, the machine before this had the floppy disk drive in it. Um, and therefore it's not. In, it's expecting to see a floppy disk and it's got a USB drive. Now if that's the case, it could be quite difficult to get it, revert it back to how it was. Um, I'm not entirely sure that is the case, but it does seem to be strange that it can't see a USB port, but it can seem to see... A, uh, a floppy disk drive, even though it hasn't got one, or it thinks it can see a floppy disk drive. It probably can see the uh, like the interface to the to the, to the media in itself, and not actually the drive. So I've tried a number of things. Uh, save channel one again to file. Um, I'll save it as a spreadsheet. Uh, in theory, that should I think I should have. Save current setup. Oh, okay. Well, that time it didn't give me an error message. But if I try and select, see if I'm, this is I'm trying to select floppy disk zero, it will not let me do it. No, it just comes out the same error message again. So I think that's what's happened. I don't know anyone else out has got a TD. S3000 series, I think any of the 3000 series are basically the same. Um, but it certainly doesn't seem to uh, be any more than that someone's put the wrong firmware on there and it's just, you know, it's just not compatible with this, this unit. And of course with the floppy disk, I can't get access, I can't get access to the uh, to the machine itself. I don't know if there's any other way of reflashing the ROM with the correct um, software. Um, but I don't even know if that is really the problem. But apart from that, it seems to work absolutely fine. And I can still save data to the internal memories, but I can't export it onto a memory card, which is not the end of the world, really. I mean, I probably wouldn't use that anyway, but it'd just be interesting to see if uh, if you could actually uh, work it. And it's fairly high spec um, scope. I mean, it's probably about eight, nine years old. Uh, it's 100 megahertz, and it's got a uh, fast sample rate, 1.25 gigs a a second, which is pretty high for a machine of this age, um, certainly more than enough of the stuff I'm using it for. Of course, it's nice and compact. The only thing that is a bit annoying, I don't know if you can hear this, I'll come around the back and hear me. Listen, it's got a really noisy fan, um, and what I will do is I'll replace that with one of the uh, maybe a Noctua fan, or the uh, really quiet fans that I use in my power supplies for my computers, they uh, really cut the noise down. It's also got uh, fast Fourier analysis, which is nice, um, and you can set by FFT mode. <coughs> I haven't actually got my head around this particularly well, uh, someone told me to use the auto scale, it should sort of be able to work it out, but this should give me a frequency response, so this is frequency along here now, not time not time and amplitude is a vertical so basically it converts it more into a spectrum analyzer more than a, um, more than a um, uh, more than a scope so it's more for audio analyzing and things like that but, uh, nice little scope uh, and be nice to get this sorted out and maybe I don't know maybe 
get it, revert it back to the software if it's fairly easy, revert it back to, to use um, the USB port. But if that's not the problem, it's no big loss, it certainly works fine like this. Um, anyway, thanks for watching and uh, more to come.